Right. Um, now everything's all set up and we're all uh, live and ready to go on all of the various platforms. Um, we are waiting on our special guest, but don't worry, we do have some things to talk about. And uh, a bit of a request from you guys, actually. A, a question. See what you think. Uh, but we'll get <laughs> get to that in a second. Um, if you've had a notification that we've gone live and you're looking at your, at your calendar and thinking, no, the only way that I've been able to keep a track on what day it is, is knowing that Talking Con is on a Wednesday and a Sunday. What on earth is all these special episodes going on? Well, as it happens, uh, yes, we have got this uh, special episode, which we're going to talk to uh, Chip Mojin. Now, I do know his time is limited, so I think he'll probably be jumping in pretty much um, at the top of the hour, but uh, we'll see if, uh, if and when he shows up. Uh, but in the meantime, we do have some things that we can kind of talk to you about. Um, yes, you're also going to find me in slightly different surroundings. Uh, but I'll explain that in a second as well. Basically, no, I might as well do it now. Probably go back. Basically, uh, as you may or may not know, my other half works for a chain pub uh, here in the UK. And they are working on various ways to kind of uh, get uh, the doors reopened, which means she's having a Zoom meeting downstairs in the room, which I would usually be doing my broadcast from. So I have been kind of seconded up into the uh, into the bedroom uh, so you're going to see uh, yeah, don't worry it's not all uh, kind of uh, uh, sort of like sexy boudoir stuff or anything don't worry about it it's nice and uh, subdued but um, it does mean that we're kind of uh, in a slightly different background as you'll see when we, we go live right um, the other thing I want to very quickly mention and I'll bring this up at the end as well uh, because uh, um, I'm going to bring this uh, to remind you of the guests that are coming up in uh, coming weeks um, we've got ourselves an email that's come through the door. Uh, I am trying to get Declan Shalvey on the show, and I'm really looking forward to talking to him. However, he's turned around and said, um, well, is it possible I can share the show with Alex on the Wednesday, Alex uh, Pagnadel, or shall I have my own show on the Sunday? I think I want to get his own show. It's Declan Shalvey. Come on, let's be fair. So let's see what we can do about that. But that's what we'll try and do, and we'll try and get that uh, up and running. We'll announce that. But we've got loads of other guests that are already in the, uh, the can already, ready to go for uh, next month. Looking forward to it. Right. Uh, if you are watching, jump in. Let us know where you're watching from. I know it's a bit of a uh, strange one on a Friday night. Strange time as well. But, hey, listen, it's okay. It's Friday, and we can kind of do what we're doing. And I'll try my best to uh, yeah, ignore the mess. Ignore the mess. It's just better to ignore the mess. But um, this is something when we do the incidental episodes, it's when someone can't actually come on to the main show or they've got something they want to kind of talk about specifically. And that's why we have a, uh, a special guest with us today. Uh, we've got Chip Mosier who's joining us. Hello there, Chip. How are you, sir? How's it going? Oh, hello. Can you hear there me? There we go. We can hear you. Excellent stuff indeed. We can. Um, there's a little bit of a delay, but um, I think uh, we'll get. We'll, we'll work our way through it. We will, Sounds good. We'll, we'll negotiate as it is. Um, now, Chip, I've met once, and in fact, Chip, um, I've, I've mentioned a post on my uh, an Englishman in San Diego website. Um, really, does have to be very patient with me, if anything, because he got me my first decent interview at San Diego Comic Con, and I kind of blagged it. <laughs> but I managed. To, I got my way through it, um, and uh, Chip was there to hold my hand. It was very much a, a case of uh, uh, he was very generous with his time uh, with uh, helping that out. Oh, I think he's going to try and uh, come back on. There was a little bit of a. Uh, I know it's a mess. That's if you have a look. Actually, it's all comics. It's all comics and DVDs and stuff. Uh, I think he's going to try and come back on. But there we go. Uh, let's have a look at this. Uh, dying to know if Caroline Zoom buddies are commenting on the Scotty Young Avengers poster. It, camera's facing the opposite direction. <laughs> so, yeah, it's okay about that one. Am I back? Um, How's that? You are back. Yay. Yeah, fine. Yeah, there you go. Excellent stuff indeed. I got you. Um, your, I, how did you mess up the interview? I forgot. Um, it was with, um, it was, uh, let me see. It was, I mean, you were very generous with um, introducing me to Helen, um, sorry, with uh, Heidi McDonald. Oh, he was coming, okay. walking through the same door. At which point you kind of introduced us, and then went, I went well, and she goes, "Oh no, Englishman in San Diego, I know him." At which point my heart went all the flutter. Uh, but no, all in all, you were very generous with me, and um, it was my first proper interview at a San Diego Comic Con, so I I kind of well, got through. Great. So there yeah. we go. But it was great. Um, 
which kind of leads on to my first question uh, about this book that you would like to talk to us about, um, this kind of evolution of what you're, you're doing. I mean, if you can explain to people, number one, who you are and what you do and um, kind of how you've got to the point of uh, bringing out blacking out. Those are those are very existential questions. Who am I? <laughs> uh, what? What's I'm, a, what I'm a guy. Have? I'm a guy. Just you know, just uh, living living life, trying to do the best he can. Um, uh, you know, during the during the day, uh, you know, uh, I'm Bruce Wayne. No, uh, during the day, I uh, I serve as head of content at Comicsology, and uh, I oversee the Comicsology Originals program. And, uh, and then in my, uh, in my spare time, uh, I've been working on this, uh, this book for, uh, for way too long. <laughs> way <laughs> how, long, too how, long. long how long has it taken to kind of get this up and running? I, you know, uh, this iteration, uh, of, of the, of the book, I gave the, you know, I, um, had the story in uh, in my back pocket for a long time. And then I, I had the script and then, uh, and uh, it was it was going to be my follow up to Left on Mission, uh, which is a comic book I did in um, 2007 with Francesco Francavilla, and uh, and yeah, I got a little busy uh, uh, with uh, my job at Boom Studios, and uh, which was uh, a thrill ride uh, when I joined Boom. In 2007, uh, Wade and I joined at the Mark Wade and I joined at the uh, around the same time, and uh, and Boom wasn't, uh, it, it, you know, Boom wasn't even ranked in the top 20 direct market publishers. And then in two years, we were uh, uh, number six, and so uh, that was uh, a lot of fun and a lot of work, uh, and uh, and so the you know I, my debut comic. Right, my you know writing debut came out in two thousand seven, and then uh, and then that took a, a backseat, and then uh, it took a further backseat, <laughs> and so uh, so uh, you know around around like twenty, you know I forget if it was twenty fifteen or twenty sixteen. I talked to Pete uh, Kraus, Peter Kraus, uh, who I met uh, I met and became friends with when he was working uh, on Wade's Irredeemable. And, uh, and I just love Peter and I love his work. And, uh, and I knew I had a particular vision for how I wanted the book to be done. I, you know, have the privilege, you know, as part of my day job at Comixology of, you know, being able to attend the Angoulême Comics Festival in France. And, and I've uh, fallen in love with, uh, with the Bon Dessine format and, uh, you know, for those who don't know, here's a yeah. here's a mock up of the. You just showed this, but this is. Hang on, hang on. The case cover. So it's you know it is uh, humongous, and just for, you know, here I'll give Brew Baker a little plug. Uh, <laughs> bad weekend, but you can see you know it's it's uh, you know versus regular comics, it's taller and, and sure. much wider. And you know, usually the Bond SNA, the European hardcover album format, is uh, is standard, like forty eight page. It's like fifteen to twenty five euros. And uh, you know, I was talking to one of the artists uh, in France, and and they told me their contract was once they sign up to do a book, they have six months to turn in the first page, and then after they turn in the first page, they have six months to turn in the last page. So versus you know, sort of sort of, you know, your standard one page a day artist, you know, you look at any French, Franco-Belgian Bond SNA uh, albums and, and the art's just amazing. And it's because these, you know, the artists have, you know, months and months and months of time to work on it versus, you know, uh, your usual, you know, sort of American uh, uh, comics. And so, so I knew like that's that's what I wanted to distill the story in. And uh, Peter has a long career uh, doing storyboards, uh, and uh, and so I really wanted the uh, I really wanted to to you know to ha to really work deeply with with the artist. And so uh, the script I provided him had no uh, no panel breakdowns and oh, wow. uh, no no page breakdowns, and it was just the story. And so we kind of you know it's more akin to the 
you know, uh, the storied uh, Marvel style of working where, you know, Stan would call up Jack and go, Jack, do this. And then Jack would turn in the pages and Stan would uh, put in the story. And so, so I gave... Well, uh, well, the, great, the great thing about that method, of course, is you get this real collaboration between yourself and the, the, the artist and with Peter. Mm -hmm. and, and I can imagine as well that he brought a lot in terms of the the story oh. and the tone and the flavor but how did so how did that evolve from what you had in your head to what kind uh, eventually came out yeah i mean i i you know i uh you know a lot of it is is uh as we say in the south uh where i'm from in texas letting go and letting god um so uh you know, I, I like once once he storyboarded it out and I looked at it and I was like, hey, this looks amazing and go for it. And then, it, you know, and he did the characters and I looked at the characters and I was like, well, that's not exactly what I had in my head. But like this is, you know, this is what's in Pete's, you know, Pete Red has take, you know, Pete's like translating. Right. He's like the first step in the in the co-creation process right it's like i come up with the story and then that story goes into pete's head and then out comes this thing and it's not quite what was quite exactly what was in my head but it was better you know and so you know the the working deeply and 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 collaboratively like this you know it, it it's just you know it, everything's an additive process and so you know, and so, you know, when I gave the script to Pete, I was like, take as long as you need for this to be, you know, I want, I want the best pages that you'll, you know, I want the best pages that you can do. And I really think it's, it's, it's really, a, uh, you know, some of his best work. I, I, you know, I can't, I can't say the writing's great. I, I think it's good, <laughs> but you know, Pete's work is fantastic. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, it's like, that's, the Conrad in my head, I don't think had a mustache, you know, and then Pete came with this, you know, guy and I was like, this is rad, you know, and, and then, you know, you have to, you have to uh, be open to that creative uh, collaboration. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, and that, and that's just all through the line, right? So yeah. Julia, the colorist, Julia Brusco, who's insanely talented, you know, brought a whole nother layer Ed Duke Shire, you know, b basically hand drew, you know, every word balloon. If you look through the book, there's not any two word balloons that, that are the same and, and, and really brought, you know, if you look at the word emphasis and the stuff that he's doing, you know, Ed's just brilliant at that. And then, uh, and then Tom uh, Muller came in at the end and, and uh, did the cover design and, uh, and, uh, and the logo, the logo's, well, I, yeah, I'm, brilliant. A, well, I'm, a, I'm a Tom Muller fan. So yeah. who isn't? Who isn't? I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm a fan of all these people that you know. So it's probably about a you know three and a half years, four years, wow. you know, soup to nuts, you know, just doing this, you know, while I had the day job, you know, and uh, and uh, you know, it's it's nice. Uh, the response has been uh, fantastic, and uh, to the Kickstarter, and uh, I'm you know I'm really blessed with how. Uh, how well that's been doing and uh and just well, excited I mean, to get this out in people's hands well i mean we'll get to the kickstarter element of it uh, in a in a second because obviously that's something that we've been talking about a lot here on uh the show for the last two months uh because uh, obviously uh, the, i mean the term i've used is that we're good i think we're going to see a lot of covid babies uh coming out with a lot of collaboration and a lot of uh creators trying to find direct ways of reaching uh, so we'll get to the uh the Kickstarter element. When it comes to the actual uh, book itself, I mean, number one, it's great to see the, the size that you're working at. And you can certainly understand, say, for example, why Jeff Darrow moved to France. He likes working on the big pages. He likes taking that time and he likes that European uh, style. But I mean, the book that uh, you, uh, you've uh, you've sent me the PDF uh, of the, uh, the, the first uh, kind of a taste of it. And there's a real sense of um, stories. I mean, Bad Weekend, you uh, picked up there certainly the uh, the brew baker uh, 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 Phillips kind of style that is definitely in there um I see stump town in there as well uh, you know infused with kind of like the you know the, those rich kind of tula lote uh, kind of colors it's a real kind of it's a very rich uh story um 
I'm, I'm, I'm happy. To, I'm happy for you to compare me even more to any of those great <laughs> creators. <laughs> what, what what was what were the touchstones uh, to the story? If if you were going to uh, pitch to somebody, what were the books or the not just necessarily comics, but you know, like the the story touchstones that you were aiming for when putting uh, Black Black Out together? You know, I it, it's probably more akin to like uh, you know, I'm a huge uh, crime. I'm a huge film noir. Uh, uh, a fan and uh, neo noir and all the you know whatever you know I, I love crime films I love heist films you know I, I I guess was it a year or so ago I went to the digital uh, 4K remastering of Heat with the uh, cast and crew and and I only I, watched that the other day oh what a film oh man the 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 4K digital remaster is is uh, a revelation. I, I, God, I love that film to death. And so, uh, I, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I inhale everything that Ed and Sean do, uh, and you know, uh, Rucka's Rucka's crime stuff is great. And I love, uh, you know, Rucka's, uh, his Atticus, uh, crime, uh, you know, detective books, his novels are fantastic. Uh, but uh, this probably has more to do with uh, my love of, uh, D you know, Jim Thompson and James Elroy and, you know, David Goodis and uh, and uh, Gary Phillips, who's written a bunch of comics, but has written a, a, a bunch of crime novels, which are brilliant. I love Gary. Uh, he's such a talented guy. And uh, and yeah, and Charles Williford is, is a big favorite of mine, though, uh, though all those people are much better writers than me. So let's talk about um, Kickstarter then. Um, why crowdfunding? Why right now? Um, uh, considering that at this point it is very difficult for people to balance books at this point. Funds are particularly tight. It is a very difficult market to reach people um, at this point. Why did you feel that now was the time was to uh, pull the trigger and uh, get blacking out out there? Well, I, I always, uh, I, I had, um, you know, it's, this is a month later than I expected to, <laughs> to, to do this. Uh, you know, uh, we shot, Pete was supposed to come into LA early March, uh, when we shot the video, if you look at the video on the Kickstarter page, you'll see, uh, I got a really, really short haircut before that video. And then, <laughs> and then we're, gonna, we're the, gonna play it. We're gonna play it at the end. We're gonna and, and, then, and, then, and then you'll see the video with Pete, and it's like two months later, uh, <laughs> and my hair's grown out. Uh, but Pete was supposed to be in the video. He got sick. Uh, you know, uh, uh, t you know, I, he hasn't gotten tested yet, but he had the flu. Uh, and uh, and anyway, we we were we were uh, you know the we finished the book and. Uh, you know, I was, we were getting the lobby cards done, the rewards and, and getting it all set. Uh, we were looking at like an early April release and then the quarantine and the COVID stuff happened. And, uh, and so, you know, we delayed that. And then, uh, you know, as sort of the quarantine lifestyle normalized, you know, Pete and I talked and, and we just decided to, uh, you know, to move ahead. I, I think that if, if the book wasn't complete, uh, I might have felt differently about doing it during this time. Uh, but the fact that I can get the product at least digitally, everyone who, everyone who pledged 10 bucks or more is going to get the book, you know, as soon as I can send it out digitally once the, once the Kickstarter ends. So, uh, you know, uh, I, and I also, you know, we went back and forth and, and how much funding and, and at the, you know, I think about three or four days before we went live, I just, I cranked it down to 500 bucks. Cause I knew I was going to, I was going to print the book come hell or high water. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, so yeah. So, you know, is this a, is this a spectacularly good time to be funding stuff for a book? You know, I, I mean, there's so much, horrible things happening in the world right sure. now. Uh, but at the same time, I think telling stories is important. Uh, I think entertainment uh, is important, you know, and uh, and so, you know, I think it's a balance. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so we just decided to, to sally forth.
makes sense. Um, also, I, I have to kind of, yeah, I mean, why the low goal? Because um, I, I saw that on the uh, thing, because uh, it says here, pledged of 405, it's, it's in pounds here in the UK, 405 pounds, so $500. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I, I knew I, 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 uh, this was I, this was gonna go. This was gonna yeah, happen. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I'm gonna print. I, I'm I was gonna print the book, you know. Yeah. I and uh, and so so I just you know I just made you know I I was gonna I was I gonna ask for more. Uh, I was gonna ask for ac the actual complete printing and shipping cost, uh, and then I was just like, you know what, uh, you know, it's the it's the pandemic's happening and, and, you know, I, this is going to happen anyway. And so, sure. you know, I just wanted people to feel like they weren't taking a risk. And so, okay. and, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's a pretty low risk project. <laughs> um, I mean, another question I've been asking a number of people that have been coming on and asking, uh, sorry, uh, talking about Kickstarters and GoFundMes and projects of, uh, of this nature, getting direct connection with the audience out there. Um, why was crowdfunding um, for you the, the best platform for blacking out instead of taking it to uh, a publisher like Comixology, like um, Image, uh, for example? Uh, why, was kick, why was crowdfunding the, the best platform for you? You know, I, you know there's, a, there's a couple of uh, specific uh, things having to do where, uh, you know, obviously it, it, with my day job, I uh, have uh, different, uh, different levels of business dealings with, uh, with a lot of, you know, with a lot of publishers, et cetera. And so uh, I really wanted to be able to stand on my own two feet with this project, uh, and uh, and I, you know, I'm trying to avoid any any um, appearance, yeah, any appearance of a conflict of interest at all. And so, uh, so yeah, so I, I uh, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm keeping a, a pretty firm separation between church and state with this project. Good way of putting it. Good way of putting it. A couple of comments that are coming in. Thank you very much indeed to everyone. If you do have any comments for Chip, uh, we've got him for another five minutes or so. So do jump in. Uh, Into the Blue, Mr. Loving the cover design of the book. Very cool. Well, yeah. I mean, like I say, we, we've mentioned it already. It's it's Tom Miller. The man knows what he's doing. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've been a fan of his for a long time. Um, look, look at that spot gloss. Look at that spot gloss. Man knows what he's doing. Excellent. Uh, also from uh, Into the Blue, Mister, uh, I think this is more about uh, the, the comment you made earlier about Heat. Uh, the only occasion where a director has remade his earlier movie, uh, Michael Mann, L.A. Takedown, is possible? I'm certain there's somebody else out there. I think Orson Welles has done it, but I'd have to think. But there we go. Uh, but uh, thank you very much, Lee, for for those comments. Yeah, I mean, the design uh, looks uh, very impressive of the book, uh, and it's obviously something which is very much designed to be read and enjoyed uh, as a physical um, uh, item. Um, what's the the plans for uh, future volumes? Then, uh, I mean, where does the story go in terms of uh, volume two, for example? This, this is it, man. It's one and done. One and done. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you say this is a sing a very singular project, you kind of you you meant it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, I, I like very definitive endings. Uh, and, uh, I had a, I had a very definitive ending with left on mission. And I remember I had people at conventions coming up to me and go like, so what happens next? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I, you know, I got no plans. I got no plans. Uh, so there's no, no, there's no no plans, nothing rattling in the back of your head for uh, where the story goes next for this. No, no, no. This is it. Okay. In that case, has it kind of gotten you a, a serious bug for uh, a next story and a next project? You know, I I am like the slowest writer in the world, and the <laughs> probably the least prolific comic book creator uh, in existence. 
So, you know, maybe, uh, you know, so I'm averaging, uh, I'm averaging a project every decade. So, you know, we'll see. Fair enough. Um, and I think what we'll do is very, very quickly, we'll uh, bring this up onto the screen so people can actually check out the, uh, the uh, link itself. Uh, I mean, if you can give the elevator pitch for Blacking Out, it's something that we haven't, we've kind of touched on the, the style and the tone and what the approach is to the book, but if you can, you give the elevator pitch for, uh, for Blacking Out for everybody. Bad people doing bad things. <laughs> so uh, it uh, it's about a drunk ex cop looking for redemption by uh, by solving a murder during the Southern California wildfire season in the in a fictional town of Edendale, and as he's trying to figure out who you know who did this murder, the fire is coming and encroaching on the town slowly. It's a slow burn. Leonard, what happened to you? Please tell me you're still there. Yeah, yeah, I lost you. Did, did, Don't did, ask. What, I have no idea what on earth happened there. Did, I have not a clue. Did I get? Did I get cut off mid pitch? Uh, it was. It was me. I think it was me. Okay. No, we'll try that was again. It just okay. me. Was it just me solo I, for? I, a I, know, I have no idea. Okay. So we'll try again. Go for the uh, pitch. It's a. Uh, it's about. Uh, it's a drunk ex cop looking for redemption by trying to solve a murder in the fictional town of Edendale during the Southern California wildfire season. Uh, and, uh, as he, uh, as he is, uh, is trying to solve this murder, you know, the town is, uh, is starting to get engulfed by a forest fire. Fair enough. Um, I, we got one or two people, uh, it's all like, yeah, uh -oh. it, it was, it was me. It was me. I do apologize. It's okay. But no, I mean, we've got the link up and I really do recommend everyone checking it out. Like I say, I mean, the, the actual, um, the benefits as well. Uh, the, 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 the Kickstarter, um, that you've got up and running. Um, it's like you say, it's a very, uh, approachable, it's, it's affordable and it's, um, certainly something for people to check out. Um, I, 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 I can't wait for people to, uh, read more about this and it to, uh, kind of, yeah, really get more of people's attention. Um, so listen, you, and me, yeah. you and me both brother, <laughs> you know, and, and we have some great, we have some great rewards, uh, you know, just, uh, super, uh, excited that, uh, I was able to work with Francesco again. And, uh, and so we did a whole set of lobby cards. So we have lobby cards by Francesco Francavilla, Eduardo Riso, Elise McCall, Patrick Reynolds, Jacob Phillips, uh, Ryan Kelly, um, um, Emma Rios, holy crap. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, Jamal Igel, uh, oh, and Dan Panosian. I mean, yeah, the lobby cards are, are uh, yeah, it's like an embarrassment of riches. I mean, the, the Pete's work is, is amazing. The books, you know, I, I, I'm in love with the finished project, even though it's my project, uh, you know, uh, it's always nice when you finish something and you love it. Uh, but, but also the, the rewards are great. And, uh, and that's Lulu. Say hi, Lulu. So hi, Lulu. <laughs> hi, Lulu. How's it going? Bye. So it wouldn't be a um, Zoom meeting or a, any kind of uh, video chat if we didn't have an animal involved. I it, know, right? It's the way it works. It's the way it works. Well, I'll tell you what. Listen, I'm going to play the video for blacking out. But uh, before we do, I just wanted to say thank you very much indeed, so much for coming on. Re I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, Thanks for having me. Everybody, please do check out the uh, the uh, the Kickstarter, kickstarter.com slash projects slash blacking dash out slash, and all of these with da dashes in between, blacking out a graphic novel by Chip Mosier and Peter Krauss. Chip, thank you very much indeed for coming on. It's a pleasure talking to you, sir. Hopefully, we'll catch you at a convention uh, somewhere down the line. Uh, I'm guessing 2021 is now uh, looking like the next time you're going to get yourself to a show. 
We'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Well, let's see where we go with the uh, the rest of this particular year, and hopefully we'll see you down the line. Chip, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much. Excellent stuff, indeed. Thank you so much, indeed, for coming on. Right. Um, so we're going to play this video because um, it really is a very cool project, indeed. Um, a Tale of Fire and Murder in Southern California. Check it out. Blacking Out. It's a, a graphic novel by Chip Mosier and Peter Krauss, and it's available on Kickstarter right now. Hi, this is Chip Mosier, and welcome to our Kickstarter for Blacking Out. 20 years ago, I moved to Southern California, to Los Angeles. It's a place where people reinvent themselves. It's a place that shouldn't exist. When I moved here, I realized, while there's been lots of great stories about water in Los Angeles, there haven't been any great stories about fire. And I'm also a big crime fan. I love James Elroy. I love Jim Thompson. I love Charles Williford. And so I was driving up the five one day and I'd fallen in love during the Southern California fire season with just the beauty of the destruction and how the light from the sun changed with the smoke in the air. So I was trying to capture that on film. And the idea for blacking out just hit me like a ton of bricks. And so I wrote it down. And then I knew I needed the perfect collaborators to do this book. And so I called up my old friend, Peter Krause, known Peter for years since we worked together when I was the marketing director at Boom Studios and he was drawing Irredeemable. And Peter and I talked about the book and he drew it and just did a bang up job. And then I knew I needed the perfect colorist, the perfect letter. And so I reached out to Julia Brusco, who just did an incredible job on Scalped over 60 issues. And Ed came in, it's one of the best letters in the business and just really spent a whole heck of a lot of time on the lettering. And then we got Tom Muller to design the book. And having gone to Angoulême in France and experiencing the Bon Dessiné, the European album format, I really fell in love with that format and conceptualized Blacking Out as a one and done 56 page European album hardcover. And that's what we have. And it's going to be beautiful. The book is completely done and it's ready to go to print. So all we're asking you is to support us so we can get the money we need to send it to the printer. Again, the book's done. It just needs to go to print. And I hope you will support this Kickstarter so we can do that. We have some great rewards, including lobby cards by luminaries like Eduardo Riso, Francesco Francavilla, Marco Andolfo, Elise McCall, Patrick Reynolds, Ryan Kelly, Jamal Igel, Dan Panosian, Jacob Phillips, Emma Rios. Give the Kickstarter a look. Check it out. I hope you like what you see. I'm really proud of this book, and I can't wait to hear what you think. How cool is that? Check it out. Blacking Out is available on Kickstarter right now. And thank you very much indeed to Chip for joining us for uh, to talk to us about Blacking Out. Uh, a couple of comments coming in. Uh, Solicitor of Smeg, oh, man, I want that car. Well, don't we all? Don't we all want a car like that? That would be rather cool. And indeed, Into the Blue Mister, I always wonder when artists draw cars or bikes or planes, what their reference is, internet images, or do they have a small model to work at different angles from? I think that's a question more for Peter Krauss than uh, anybody. Uh, but uh, excellent stuff indeed. Uh, thank you very much indeed to everyone for joining us. Like I say, this has been a little bit of a special uh, incidental episode uh, dropping into the mix. Uh, don't forget, we are going to be back on Sunday with our last one of the uh, of the, the month. And it's... Uh, it's going to be a good one, I think. Um, someone that um, I've been looking to get on the show for a while, which is Robin Jones, who is a um, an award-winning uh, cartoonist here in the UK. Uh, Mark Jackson is also award-winning, but uh, he's more known for uh, his work as uh, the, uh, the organizer of Mac Pow, uh, which is um, a great uh, small... Uh, Macclesfield-based uh, convention, very much geared towards getting the next generation of uh, readers uh, looking at comics and really enjoying uh, the, the art form. Interesting guy. Both of them are going to be cool, and I think it's going to be great to talk to them about how 
independent and British artists have been putting together their work uh, throughout the course of the pandemic. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be a great conversation. I think that's going to be rather cool. Uh, then uh, he says, hopefully going to be bringing up uh, the next piece of uh, the next uh, card, which I can't because I think I've been editing it because yeah, we've got ourselves um, uh, something new, uh, which is, oh, there we go. Uh, this is uh, a couple of new uh, additions to the list. Like I said at the top of the show, I'm also going to be talking to you guys right now, if you're watching this, for your help and advice. Because Wednesday, 3rd of June, we've got Louise Saul and Dave Taylor. Louise is a writer and also a cosplayer herself. She writes for various cosplay magazines. She knows about the cosplay landscape and uh, wants to talk to her about um, cosplay in the age of COVID, um, how um, cosplayers have been kind of uh, expressing themselves uh, when they haven't had the uh, opportunity to go to a convention and uh, really kind of strut their stuff, as it were. Dave Taylor is a great comics writer and uh, a comics creator, so it's going to be cool to have those two on the show, um, compare and contrast the different uh, uh, styles. Uh, Sunday, the 7th of June, Fred Van Lente, um, who is uh, an award-winning uh, comics writer. Um, he's also the guy who wrote... The con artist is there in the corner. Um, very good uh, writer indeed. Uh, it's going to be cool to uh, talk to him about what he's been getting up to over the last couple of months. Tina Gann, who is uh, Red Dot Diva on the interwebs, she is somebody who um, is a long-term uh, friend of the show. Good to have her back uh, So, because we haven't spoken to her for a while. It's going to be cool to talk to her, if anything, because of where she's based. She's based in Singapore, which means uh, we're going to certainly get a sense of the uh, the uh, the Asian uh, market and what's been happening uh, in that part of the world, especially in the world of, uh, in terms of pandemic and um, how they're dealing with that stuff, uh, this conversation. I'm going to come back to work in the June. Because we've got uh, on Sunday the 28th, um, Into the Blue Mister is uh, saying uh, quite rightfully, Yay, Mike and Russ again. We are going to be having uh, Russ Berling Game and Mike Avelia. Uh, Russ Berling Game from comicbook.com, Mike Avelia from Sci Fi Wire. Um, we had a show uh, on Sunday just gone, and it was a blast. And we could have carried on talking for ages, and they're just uh, they're great. So it's good to see uh, that we've been able to arrange that Russ and Mike are going to come back. Like I said on a show a couple of days ago, um, I I don't want to be presumptuous enough to think that we could get Russ and Mike on the last Sunday of every month just to shoot the shit, but I wouldn't mind at all if we could. <laughs> but I'm taking this, quite frankly, the best. I'll, I'll take this uh, quite happily. Sunday, the 28th of June, uh, Russ Burlingame, Mike Abelia. Right. Here's the the thing to you. Here's the, the poll. Instant uh, comments uh, comment questioning now. Are you ready? On Wednesday the 10th of June, we've got Alex Packnadel. Now, the name may not be instantly familiar, uh, but he will be. Um, he's somebody who's written some incredible books um, for Boom Studios, mostly. He's also done some uh, uh, Assassin's Creed stuff as well, um, but it's mostly his creator-owned stuff, which he is known for. He is, for me, um, the next wave. He, him with a number of other creators as well. He has put together White Noise, White Noise Studios. Um, and as a British wave of creators coming together and putting stuff out there, he is an incredibly talented bloke and could possibly be, for my money, uh, the next Kieran Gillen, dare I say, even... Bigger names? No, I'm not even going to jinx it. We'll just stay with that one for the moment. Alex Packnadel is a great writer. Really looking forward to talking to him. However, I've had an email because I've been pestering Declan Shalvey for absolutely ages. And Declan has gotten back to me today. He got back to me about uh, five minutes before we went on air. And he said, I'd be up for, I'm up for coming on. Um, you've shown me the, uh, the dates where you're free. Um, can I come on with Alex? Or am I okay to come on the Sunday after and have a show of my own? What do you think? Should I share with Alex Packnadel and have those two, a meeting of minds for an hour, which would be phenomenal? And it'd be great to have the three, the three of us just bouncing off each other. So that'd be rather cool. Or shall we have Declan Shelby on his own and have Alex Packnadel on his own, knowing that at some point, on those four TBAs, I want to try and get 
um, a certain Bill Sinke uh, Sinkevich on the show. Um, what do you think? You've got instant time to get into the comments. Tell me now, do you think we should have Alex and Declan Shalvey, uh, the writer as uh, a writer and uh, co-creator, well, co-creator and artist of Bog, Bog Baby, uh, Bog Babies? I can, I, yeah, top of my head, You're completely messed. Anyway, I mean Moonlight. Uh, the, the man's a great artist, but what do you think? Should we get him on his own show, or shall we share with Alex? Start typing and let me know. But there you go. That's what we're looking at for next month. Uh, please do join us for our shows, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. GMT. And, of course, if we do get any additional guests as well, uh, I mean, for example, if that Bill Sienkiewicz, um interview happens to fall uh, on uh, a day when we can't get him on a Sunday or a Wednesday, you may see a very random show popping about an hour and me talking to Bill Sienkiewicz for as long as I can keep him. Um, let's put it this way. I know for a fact that, um, he will probably want to just sort of like come on for an hour. I'll just try and keep him as long as I can, but there we go. Uh, into the blue mister, tough call, get them both on, expect it to run for an hour and a half at least. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, Aaron neighbors, get them both on together. Dan Berry says both as well. You know what? I actually thought you were going to say, give, give them their own, own show each. Carol, there you go. You, you've been outvoted, Carol. But uh, separate shows, too much to share. You're absolutely right. Um, you, you, you can't, you're saying, you're telling me what you feel. And I may just have to go with that. I'll, I'll, bow, I'll, bow, I'll bow, to my, bow to the audience whims. But there we go. Okay. Uh, having an hour and a half show is a reason in favor of my opinion. Um, you know what? Yeah. Let's see what we can do about that. Let's see if we can keep them that long. Um, and let's see if we can do something about it. Okay. If we can get them for an hour and a half, we'll get them together. If their time is limited and they can only do an hour, let's do an hour each. Make sense? Fair enough. Okay. That's um, on the way then. So I'll start typing away and we'll have Declan Shelby in there for good measure uh, for next month. It's looking like a uh, very cool bunch of shows right the other thing that i want to very very quickly announce um is something that uh, i've been thinking about this run of uh talking comic cup of tea with an englishman in san diego this season as it were season seven um as always with these uh seasons they come to a close on the weekend of san diego comic-con uh in july uh the idea is that what i do is i have all this energy we do the shows um we then then do comic-con and then i have a week or two off that's a little bit of what i'm going to be doing this time round. what we're going to do is we are going to keep with the twice a week uh we're going to stick with uh doing wednesdays and sundays and we're going to do that through to uh the uh the weekend in july for san diego comic-con we're then going to do a little bit of a virtual uh, Comic Con. We're going to talk to as many people as we can. Those that would have been at San Diego, we're going to talk to, have little kind of mini panels and try and, we could probably do a week of them. I'm going to try and do as much as I can in that week that would be San Diego Comic Con. Then I'm going to take a month off and then we're going to come back once a week. Um, the reason why we went twice a week uh, during pandemic is basically as a coming together of a convention family and the way that you have supported us, the way that the uh, creators have come together and we have had a run of shows, which baffle me and absolutely blow my mind every time I think about it. Um, it's just stunning and staggering to me, but I don't think I can keep that up twice a week. Um, I think we can do through to July. And like I say, throughout that week in July, I will be doing to, doing as many um, live streams as I possibly can. I'll try and get as many people who would be in San Diego at that time. Um, if we can get some bodies, I know we've got Dan Berry who's watching. If we can even have uh, a little bit of a stroll around San Diego, that, that's off the top of my head. Something for that week, we'll be doing something special. But then we're going to take a month 
We're going to come back. We come back strong with season eight, and we're going to look at the rest of the year, considering that at that point we would be looking at uh, New York Comic Con. Nothing's been announced yet. New York Comic Con at this point is technically still going ahead. But we'll see what happens. Thank you very much indeed for coming on. Thanks for watching uh, today. Um, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of days' time where we'll be talking uh, to uh, two incredible creators. Uh, very much a case of uh, interested to see what they say. Robin Jones and Mark Jackson, our last show of this month. Take care. Stay safe. Wash your hands. And we'll see you on the other side. Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. GMT for Talking Con, a cup of tea with an Englishman in San Diego. We'll see you soon. <laughs>